Tov. Oh. to everybody for braving me. Gishmei bracha to me. So somebody said I should speak about water in the parasha. I prefer to speak about bread. So let's talk about the man a little bit. We read this week in the parasha about the man which fell down. Obviously, we know the man is a very central uh, theme, a very cent- central subject. There are those who have the, uh, there's a skula to read the parasha Taman this week. There are those who have the custom to read this parasha every single day. Many things that we learn from it in terms of imunah, bitachon, many fundamentals of faith, but there are many halachot as well, which are connected, which are connected to the man. For example, we learn about from Shabbat, from this parasha, and probably the, the most famous halacha, which we learn connected to the man, is Lecha Mishnah, Lecha Mishnah that we have every Shabbat, uh, where it comes from. We know we have two uh, loaves for Hamotzi at each of the Shabbat meals. And that comes from the fact that this is a zecher to the man, the Torah tells us that each day the man would fall and everybody would go out and they would collect a certain amount. It was Omer la Gugolet. That was the portion. Each person could collect uh, the amount which they needed only for that day. Somebody tried to collect a little bit more. It wouldn't help. The extra that they took would go, would go moldy, would go off. Couldn't take any extra. The one exception was on Erev Shabbat on Friday, right? Because they could not go out and collect, uh, collect the man on Shabbat. So before Shabbat, they would go and they would take an extra, uh, extra portion. If you look at the way it's written in the Pesukim, so it tells us, first it says, right, Each person should uh, collect from it the amount they need to eat. In other words, the Omer, that is the size, that's the amount of man for each member of the household, right? Take for, for, for each member. And then it tells us, that's where the phrase, that's where it comes from, Lechem Mishnah, right? an additional portion of bread, uh, in this case of man. Uh, two, um, instead of one Omer per person, you have two Omer for, per person. So as a remembrance of that, we have on uh, Shabbat, we have these two loaves to remind us, remind us of the man. So a couple of interesting halachic questions which come out of this. First of all, this idea of having Lechem Mishnah is it a din do right or do banan? That's something, well, it's always the first question, right? The, the poskim discuss. So the Kolbo says, the Kolbo, one of the Rishonim, says actually it is a din do right that one has to have Lechem Mishnah. And he says it's learned out. In fact, the Gemara says, the Gemara tells us we have to have an extra portion because it says Lechem Mishnah. So the way, the one way to learn it, the Kolbo says these words are completely superfluous, right? It didn't need to say that. The Torah already told us, Omer uh, Google that each person takes an Omer. And then for Shabbat, it tells us, you take two Omer, that's enough. Why did it have to add in the words, Lechem Mishneh, extra Lechem? That is completely superfluous. Says the Kobo, that's to teach you from here, Din Doraita, that you have to have Lechem Mishneh at your, at your Shabbat meals. Uh, and this is the way the, the Arucha Shulchan, uh, the Taz, number of Poskim say, it's actually Din Doraita. Others come along and say, no, the fact the Gemara says, Lechem Mishneh, it's an asmachta ba'alma. When we have nowadays, the fact we have to have lechem mishneh, that is zechel aman, it's a din drabanan, but that's, uh, that's how it is. So that is one machloket. What does it mean to have lechem mishneh? What are, what, what are the, uh, the loaves that we have to have? So the Gemara says, Gemara Bracho says that unlike on Pesach, in Pesach where we have a half a piece of bread, in that case, a piece of matzah, you have a lechem prusa, right? You have the matzah which is broken in half. On Shabbat, you need to have two full loaves. You need to have lechem mishneh. The loaves have to be complete. Regarding Pesach, this is where this is where it actually comes from. We have three matzot on Pesach. The symbolism, everybody knows, right? Kohen, Levi, Israel, Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, whatever symbolism you want. But the three matzot starts off because you have a, a from a halachic matter, meaning that we understand that you need to have the half. Uh, you need to have the half matzah because on Pesach it's called lechem oni. So then the question is, what do you do about Lechem Mishnah? So there are those who say, well, because Lechem Mishnah in itself is two full loaves, the two loaves have to be complete. If one of them is not complete, that's not. So there are those who say, that's why we have three. You have the two loaves there for Lechem Mishnah and you have the one which is a half. 
And the Rishonim ask, how can it be? If the whole point on Pesach is that you have half a loaf because it's meant to be lechem only, you're meant to have less and you end up having an extra one. How does that, how does that make sense? We talk about that when we get to Pesach. But for, the, for our purposes, for now, if it comes to Shabbat, Shabbat, the loaves need to be, need to be complete. And Tosfot says, if you, were to, if you were to cut the lechem or you were to break it before you've made the bracha, you've not fulfilled the mitzvah of, of lechem mishnah. In other words, it's something intrinsic. It's something just fundamental. Part of the idea of lechem mishnah is that the loaves have to be whole. That's how Tosfot understands. That's how others understand. Yeah. You start out with the four. Right. So once you eaten part of it was the Friday night, what happened Saturday morning? You eat the same bread with the half of what bread that's left? Oh, so that's an interesting question. So, so, so each meal, when you start off, you have to have the two whole, you, you start again. The question that comes out of that is, let's say Friday night, when you have, this another question that Puskin discussed, when you break the bread, when you eat from it, do you, when we say you have to have two loaves, does that mean you have to eat from two loaves? Or you have to just have the two loaves and eat one of them. There are those who say, there's a minority opinion that says actually have, it's not enough to have two loaves. You have to eat from both of them. But there are those who say it's better not to eat from both of them. Because if the reason we're having Lecha Mishnah, we have the two loaves, is as a reminder of the man, right? Which was there was some left over for the next day. So better have some on the Friday night and have some which is left over and have your second loaf. But at the, at the next meal, you should start off with two, two whole loaves again. Okay, but... So that's one understanding that the fact that the loaves are whole is part of the din of Lechem Mishnah itself. There is another understanding. The Arucha Shulchan writes this, a number of the Poskim write this as well, that why does it have to be whole? It has to be whole because it's derech kavod. Generally speaking, whenever we have a bracha, whenever we have, a, we have bread, we're going to make a, make a bracha on, on the one of different types of foods. It's better to have a whole food rather than a broken food than something which, is, which has been uh, sliced up. That's their kavod. So that's a different din in terms of that. But in terms of lechem mishnah, he says lechem mishnah means you have two two breads, but they don't have to. They don't actually have to be whole. So here you have the first nafkamim. That according to Tosfot and according to that understanding, if you don't have two full loaves, you've not fulfilled lechem mishnah. According to the understanding of the Rucha Shulchan, he says no. You have two pieces of bread, even if you have two slices of bread. That could be a din that you could have fulfilled lechem mishnah. It's better. It's obviously better to have two uh, to have two full, full loaves. Everybody agrees. If you don't have, then there, there is an opinion that says you could have two incomplete, and that, and that would still be that would still be the double portion of bread. Then it's Siv writes that this was the custom in his father-in-law's household that they would have two slices of bread, and that would be that would be the uh, that would be the lechem mishnah. So what, the nafkamina that comes out of this is: what if a person comes to their Shabbos meal and they only have one loaf? So you don't have two loaves. You don't have, uh, right? So how can you fulfill Lechem Mishnah? According to Tosfot, you can't. You can't fulfill Lechem Mishnah because you need two full loaves. And therefore, you, so you don't have it, but you still have the mitzvah of Surat Shabbat, whatever it is. According to the understanding of the Nitziv, you would say that if you, before you bring it to the table, you would cut it in half, you would have two portions, and you would there, therefore have the, double, uh, have the double portion, and that would be, that would be Lechem Mishnah. So that's one, that's one interesting discussion, which the... Uh, which the Puskin discuss. Another case, what if a person doesn't has one full loaf, but this you don't have a second full loaf, you just have you know half the challah left over from the night before. So that according to, according to the initiative and according to that opinion, that the loaves don't have to be full, then that's still a fulfillment of Lecha Mishnah. So if your only option is to have one full one or one and a half, so to have one and a half is still according to some, uh, would be would would be the fulfillment of this. Okay, another question that comes up. Very, very interesting is what if a person has a person comes to and often this will happen as or you know the last meal you've got your you bring your challah to the table you realize you've got one challah and you've got another one in the freezer okay would that suffice would that work for lechem mishnah you're going to take your frozen challah which is and the, the can talk about it say this piece of bread which is hard as a rock sorry potentially Potential food, okay? Can your can your potential food, your potential challah, serve as part of your as part of your lechem mishnah? The truth is, it's a double question. The question is number one. Before we say is it uh, lechem mishnah, can you take it out of the freezer in the first place? Is it going to be muktzah? That's something else that the, the puskim discuss. So, and what they say, what the what the what the uh, most puskim say the following: 
the challah which is in the freezer is not going to be mutzah. Why? Because you can take a challah out of the freezer and it's going to defrost, you're going to be able to eat it, right? If it's Friday night, you take it out, you'll be able to eat it certainly on Shabbos morning. Depends how long your Friday night meal is as well. If it's, uh, if it's long enough, you might, you might be able to have it with supper. But uh, if you take it out now, if you take it out at Sudash Lishit, right, half an hour before the end of Shabbat, you're certainly not going to be able to eat it at that meal. But since there was the potential that you could have eaten it before and you could have taken it out and it would have, uh, it, it, it would have sufficed, therefore we say that chala was not muktze when, when, when Shabbat came in and you can take it unless, unless a person decided, you know, just before Shabbat, you put, your, you put your chala in the freezer and you say, I'm not using this for Shabbat. It was muktze means, muktze midato, it's been set aside and you don't have the intention to, to, uh, to use it for Shabbat. That would be a separate case. But assuming a person didn't do that, so, so therefore, it's not Muktzeh. Can it be ca- counted part of your Lechem Mishnah? So the Mishnah Alachot says, since this food, intrinsically, it's not inedible. It's not that it's not fit as food. Right now, you'd have to wait, or you'd have to put it next to the, next to the hot plate or whatever, and wait for it to get, uh, and, and until you could eat it. But since potentially it is fitting intrinsically, that would count as your, that could count as part of your Lechem Mishnah as well. Tzitz Eliezer takes it one step further. He says, if you have a food which you cannot eat, but somebody else, but if, but it could be eaten in theory, then that could still count. Because why do we have the lechem mishnah? We said you don't have to eat the second loaf; you just have to have it there. You have to have the two as a as a zeich uh, elaman. So he says, for example, Prima Garem says the following case: there is a machloket in halacha regarding pat akum, right? Bread which is baked by uh, by, by non-Jews. There are those who have the, those who are lenient and those who are stringent. Whether it can be whether it can be eaten or not. So let's say a person who is stringent about pat akum, so he has one loaf of bread, one chala, which is pat Israel, which he can eat, and he has another loaf of bread, which is pat akum, which he can't eat. Says the prima gadim. Nonetheless, you can have that on the table. That can be part of your lechem mishnah. You've still fulfilled the you've still fulfilled the mitzvah in that way, even though you can't eat it because other people could. In another case, he brings a tzitzel leizer. What happens when? Erev Pesach falls on Shabbat, on the dreaded calendar combination, so which is coming up, I think, next year. So, so Erev Pesach falls on Shabbat, so you have your meal early enough where you can still eat chametz, but let's say a person doesn't want to have lots of chametz in the house, so they say for, they'll just have one roll, which will be their challah, and for the second, uh, for the Lechem Mishnah, you have a piece of matzah. Now, you can't eat the piece, you can't eat the piece of matzah because it's Erev Pesach. And you have to wait until uh, certainly the day before Erev Pesach. We have the custom already a month before Pesach not to eat the matzah. But could it count as Lechem Mishnah? Says, yes, it could. You won't eat it, but you have it there and it can be, can be part of your Lechem Mishnah. So therefore, says the Tzitzeliah, so too in this case, where you have your frozen chala, even though you can't eat it right now, nonetheless, it could still count as a Lechem Mishnah. Rosh Hashanah argues, he says, wait a minute, all the cases you've brought, Tzitzeliah is where somebody else could eat it right now, Right? It's possible that it could be eaten, but here with the frozen challah, right now it cannot be eaten by anybody. But so says Rav Shlomo Zalman, at the end of the day, if... What, is that what you're going to say? Yeah, first, uh, can you use a chametz roll on Pesach that's not yours? No. No, no, you can't. No, no, you can't have it. There, there are lots of reasons why you can't, you can't, you can't have it in your house. It can't be yours. It's, a, you can't, it's, a, it's not yours. We, over here we're talking, but it's not, it's not, it's definitely not really for anybody to eat or to own or to use or in any way. It has, but there, but there it has to be destroyed. There it has to be, it has to be burned. You can't, there's also this discussion. If there's discussion, even if something's not yours, if it's inside the house, at the very minimum, you'd have a problem there of Rotsir Bekiyom. Rotsir Bekiyom, which is a deal we have by Abad Zara, and according to many Poskim, we have by, we have by comments as well, which is that if I want it to be in existence, that, 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 that's a transgression. So if you have it there, you want you want it to be there for the sake of uh, for the sake of uh, or anything else, that would be forbidden. So even if it's not yours, even if it's not yours, no, that, that wouldn't be. But the case of matzah again is, is, is different. You're allowed to own it. You just can't eat it. So that you eat the matzah with uh, batavu. In any event, Seitzeli as I says, you can therefore use the frozen kala. Rav Shlomo Zalman says it's got to be. He says if the, or what we said before, if the meal's going on for long enough. And at some point, you, the, even if the challah is not, you can't eat it now, but you could eat it potentially at some point later in the meal, then you can use it. 
But ultimately, the best thing is to remember to take your challah out of the freezer before Shabbat, and then there is no question. Rabbi Hanani of Anakasha, Maritz, and Kadosh Bachel, and the Kotis, 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 and